Good evening and welcome back to Prime of Midlife, who had absolutely no intention of doing another video. However, as you may have heard, Nadine Doris, one of the UK Members of Parliament, who was expecting um, to be an honours list and wasn't, resigned as an MP with immediate effect. It is now on the news that Boris Johnson, ex-Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who is under investigation by the MP-led Privileges Committee, has now resigned as an MP with immediate effect. Let me just read you some bits of this. This is if I'm, I'm like scan reading here. The BBC says, here is his statement in full. I have received a letter from the Privileges Committee making it clear, much to my amazement, that they are determined to use the proceedings against me to drive me out of Parliament. They have still not pr produced a shred of evidence that I knowingly or recklessly misled the Commons. They know perfectly well that when I spoke in the Commons, I was saying what I believe sincerely to be true and what I had been briefed to say, mm, like any other minister. They know that I corrected the record as soon as possible and they know that I and every other senior official and minister, including the current Prime Minister and then occupant of the same building, Rishi Sunak, believed that we were working lawfully together. I've been an MP since 2001. I take my responsibilities seriously. I did not lie and I believe that in their hearts, the committee know it. But they have willfully chosen to ignore the truth because from the outset their purpose has not been to discover the truth or genuinely to understand what was in my mind when I spoke in the Commons. Their purpose from the very beginning is to be to find me guilty regardless of the fact this is the very definition of a kangaroo court. Does this remind you of someone? Most members of the committee, especially the chair, had already expressed deeply prejudicial remarks about my guilt before they had even seen the evidence. They should have recused themselves. In retrospect, it was naive and trusting of me to think that these proceedings could be remotely useful or fair, but I was determined to believe in the system and in justice and to vindicate what I knew to be the truth. It was the same faith in the impartiality of our systems that led me to commission Sue Gray. It is clear that my faith has been misplaced. Of course, it suits the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats and the SNP to do whatever they can to remove me from Parliament. Sadly, as we saw in July last year, there are currently some Tory MPs who share that view. I am not alone in thinking that there is a witch hunt underway to take revenge for Brexit and ultimately to reverse the 2016 referendum result. There seems to be a theme here, bear with me. Uh, my removal is the necessary first step and I believe there has been a concerted attempt to bring it about. I'm afraid I no longer believe that it is any coincidence that Sue Gray who investigated gatherings in number 10, is now the Chief of Staff designate of the Labour leader. Nor do I believe that it's any coincidence that her supposedly impartial Chief Counsel, Daniel Stillitz KC, turned out to be a strong Labour supporter who repeatedly tweeted personal attacks on me and the government. When I left office last year, the government was only a handful of points behind in the polls. That gap has now massively widened. That's because we know what you're doing. Um, just a few years after winning the biggest majority in almost half a century, that majority is now clearly at risk. Our party needs urgently to recapture its sense of momentum and its belief in what this country can do. We need to show how we are making the most of Brexit and we need in the next months to be setting out a pro-growth and pro-investment agenda. We need to cut business and personal taxes and not just as a pre-election gimmick, rather than endlessly putting them up. We must not be afraid to be a properly conservative government. Why have we so passively abandoned the prospect of a free trade deal with the US? Why have we jumped measures to help people into housing or to scrap EU directives or to promote animal welfare? We need to deliver on the 2019 manifesto, which was endorsed by 14 million people. We should remember that more than 17 million voted for Brexit. Correct me if I'm wrong, but was he not only kicked out last year? You know, the 2019 manifesto, that's what he was supposed to be doing. It's a load of rubbish. I am now being, oh, pity me, pity, pity me. I am now being forced out of Parliament by a tiny handful of people with no evidence to back up their assertions and without the approval even of Conservative Party members, let alone the wider electorate. I believe that a dangerous and unsettling precedent has been set. Personally, I think the precedent was set quite some time ago. 
and it wasn't about them getting thrown out. The Conservative Party has had has the time to recover its mojo and its ambition and to win the next election. I had looked forward to providing enthusiastic support as a backbench MP. Harriet Harman's committee has set out to make that objective completely untenable. The committee's report is riddled with inaccuracies and reeks of prejudice, but under their absurd and unjust process, I have no formal ability to challenge anything they say. Oh, bloody bloody blah. I'm running out of ability to talk. <coughs> okay. And then he's proud of what he achieved and blah 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 blah. It is very sad to be leaving Parliament, at least for now. But above all, I'm bewildered and appalled that I can be forced out anti-democratically by a committee chaired and managed by Harry Harman with such egregious bias. Okay, I know that took me a long time and I'm going to suffer for this. He has left and all he is saying is pity me. There is nothing about all the people who followed the rules and stood on their own at their family's funerals or stood at the window watching their dementia-ridden parent, unable to recognise them, unable to give them a hug. Those nurses and doctors who did Hours and hours more who were on their knees and he's sitting there going, what I said, I believed that at the time and if I found out it wasn't right, then I changed it. He did not believe it. He just kept saying it until he could get away, for it, away with it as long as possible. And I'm really going to start coughing now. So yes, Boris Johnson has resigned with immediate effect. I personally am very happy to hear that because as someone said in the news today, at the moment... All the Tories are doing is opening the pantry cupboards and clearing everything out that they can take with them. Catch you later.